Hello and welcome back to the Coded Legacy channel. In this video, I'll teach you guys how to use the Takinger Trace feature. The Trace feature is a set of methods in Takinger that are available to certain widgets, like the int var and the string var. They are basically used to track the state of these variables and then trigger a function based on whether these variables were written to or read from. So let's begin. Here is our basic code. We have a string var set up and an entry widget. Now I'm going to call the trace function, the trace add function on this variable. Okay. The first parameter is what we call the mode. There are three different modes in Takinter for this feature, read, write, and unset. We'll take a look at them one by one. The f let's go with write first. Okay. This is the most commonly used one. Then over here, we pass in a callback, a callback to a function that we want executed whenever we write to this variable. Okay. So I'm going to come here and say, write callback. I'm going to define a function with this name and I'll say the variable has been written to. This is just there for us to know when the function was executed. Okay. Then I'll just pass that in here. All right. Oh, of course. And this actually passes in a few parameters. So we need to, you know, write these parameters over here. The first one is generally, generally called var, then there's index and then there's mode. And um, we might come back to these later, although they aren't that important. Well, mode is important actually. Mode tells you the uh, mode, you know, hold on, mode. Okay, mode in mode. All right, now I'm going to type in some values over here. And you can see that this is being printed out. The variable has been written to in mode write. So basically this parameter can be useful if you're, you know, if you want to do different things based on whether you're reading or writing. Okay. Currently we were writing to the entry widget, which is why, you know, this function was being called and the mode was write. Now this is what uh, the write method does the right mode. Whenever you modify the value of this entry widget in any way, that counts as a right operation and it's going to call the function that you pass to this callback. All right, this callback parameter. Now let's try something for read. Read is a bit trickier. Let's just change the names over here. Okay, read callback. This variable has been read. Okay, now if I just, you know, execute this and if I just keep typing in values in here, nothing is going to happen. These are all write operations. They don't count as read. So what counts as read? Well, what counts as read is when you call the get function. I'm going to create a button to help us achieve this. Root text is equal to click me and command over here will do click. And I'm going to define a new function called click. And here I'll call var.get. Whenever you call the get function on the variable, this counts as a read operation. So whenever I click this button, oh, wait, I need to pack it in. So whenever I click this button now, it's going to be, it's going to count as a read operation. Okay. And now this callback, the read callback function triggers. Okay, so that's what the read mode does. Okay, and after this, there's unset. Unset is triggered. Let's just change this to unset callback, unset, and unset in. Okay, now how does this trigger? Well, this triggers whenever the variable is destroyed. A very easy way of seeing this in action, let's just delete the extra stuff right now. Uh, or just comment it out. We don't need these. Okay. Comment these out. Now I'm going to put this, let's remove that too. I'm going to put this inside a function like this. And I'm going to call this function right here. Now this has triggered the unset function. Why? Well, that's because of the concept of variable lifelines, lifetimes, whatever. So when you call this function, this local variable is created and then we connect it to this callback. 
whenever this function finishes ex its execution, all the local variables inside of it are destroyed. So then that triggers this function because the unset mode is literally called whenever the variable it's linked to is destroyed. So this is pretty useful for that kind of scenario. If there's some kind of cleanup operation you want to perform when a variable goes out of scope. Out of scope is you know the proper term for this kind of thing when a variable gets destroyed. Okay, so yeah, this is how that works. I'm pretty sure there was one more thing I wanted to discuss. And yes, actually that is the concept of removing a trace. Right now this is trace add. There's also a trace remove. Let me uncomment this and let's bring that back here. And let's uncomment this button too. I'm going to bring back this function. Okay, um, click. And what we're gonna do here is var dot trace remove okay in order to remove a trace you need to store the return object from this function so do like tid okay trace id and then we pass that over here as the second parameter the first parameter is going to be the mode that you want to you know remove so let me just change this back to right okay right and right and right okay so i'll write right over here as well then pass in tid okay now if i run this let's see what happens i'm going to start typing in here and as you can see the variable uh, is triggering this write callback function but if i click on click me and then i wait if i start typing right now nothing happens Okay, maybe that wasn't a good example because uh, the terminal is filled with output. Let me just type in once or twice. Okay, now I'm going to click on click me and then I'll start typing. And as you can see, no more output gets shown because we have successfully removed that trace. So that's the end of this video. If you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought and I'll see you guys in a later video.